Thank you so much. It's a little hard to see with all these lights. I don't know how performers do it. Welcome, welcome to 50 and Fabulous. We are so delighted that you're joining us today, both in person and via live stream, to celebrate Congregation Beit Simchat Torah's Yovel, our golden jubilee. The small group of gay men who gathered in a church classroom to celebrate Shabbat 50 years ago could hardly have imagined that they would be lighting a spark that would grow into the greatest LGBTQS plus synagogue in the world, a place of deep Jewish learning and prayer, powerful social justice work, gorgeous music, and truly exceptional teaching for people of all ages. Tonight's performance is a tribute to the many people who've been instrumental in CBST's creation and its dynamic growth over the past 50 years. What began as a twinkle in Rabbi Kleinbaum's eye, now we know about those twinkles, has grown into a full-fledged multimedia extravaganza. The rabbi enlisted the vast talents of Cantor Sam Rosen, Joyce Rosenzweig, and Adria Benjamin, and to complete this merry band, she, control, she cajoled the wizard of words, none other than the ineffable Liz Shire. But actually, cajole, control, when it comes to the rabbi, there might be a connection. None of this would have been possible without the generosity of all of our supporters, all of you sitting out here and online, large and small, coupled with the volunteers and staff whose hard work brought us to the finish line. I extend my deepest thanks to all of you. So settle in and get comfortable. You're about to experience a real treat. And now, without further ado. Mazel Tov, CBST. We know that we are gathering for this magical celebration in the midst of a burning world. We know that we must pray every day with all of our hearts and souls for peace in Israel, in Gaza, and in the West Bank. Bring all the hostages home now. And we know that we must create space to celebrate and express gratitude for the many blessings in our lives, even while we're so aware of the curses. That is one of the deep truths at CBST. So one of the greatest blessings in all of our lives is this community. So let us celebrate this community and the blessings we have received as a result of being part of it. We're thrilled to be here tonight to just have a taste of our history and our memory, to tell, help inform our present and to help plan our future. I'm delighted that also joining us tonight, not in the program, is Rabbi Ayelet Cohen, who is going to be representing all the former Cooper Bergrit Master Rabbinical interns and all the various assistant and associate rabbis as part of the program. The American 1970s were a time of enormous social upheaval, political unrest, and some truly unfashionate fashion choices. <laughs> Unless, of course, if you were a 70s lesbian. A month before CBST's first service in February of 1973, let's remember that time. Nixon was inaugurated for the second time. The Vietnam War was slowing down. Stonewall was fresh on people's minds, and the Roe v. Wade decision had just been handed down. But then, of course, there was the music. On Broadway, Pippin won multiple Tony Awards in the year that CBST was founded. Everything 
Everything has its season. Everything has its time. Show me a reason and I'll soon show you mine. Cats fit on the windowsill. Children fit in the snow. Why do I feel I don't fit in anywhere I go? Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find my corner. Everyone has their goal. People like the way dreams have of sticking to the soul. Rain comes after thunder, winter comes after fall. Sometimes I feel I'm not after anything at all. Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. can run free gotta find my corner of the Cantor Sam Rosen. In New York City, an Indian Jewish man named Jacob Goodbye placed an ad in the Village Voice. It said with admirable conciseness, Gay Synagogue, Friday night service and Oneg Shabbat, February 9th at 8 p.m., basement entrance. He packed two shopping bags with candlesticks, kipot, wine, and challah, and he waited to see if anyone would come. A minion showed up that night, but of course, based on the number of people who have told me that they were there, <laughs> yes, there were more than 100, but <laughs> word is there was just a minion, but all it takes to have a service is a minion. Within a year, a hundred men were davening together weekly and they were outgrowing that space. Though the path is far from linear, we have come a tremendous way in these 50 years. It can be hard for us to remember or for the younger among us to imagine what those days were like, to remember what a revolutionary idea it was that being Jewish and being gay were not in conflict with one another that this small group of gay, mostly men, could worship as their true selves, both deeply Jewish and openly gay, and that they could somehow escape the hordes of local yentas trying to find them a Shana Medela. <laughs> they knew their Besherts were somewhere else. Over these 50 years, CBST has moved and evolved with a changing world. Our founders would have been astonished, astonished, to see a time in which our members could marry, divorce, have children, look so different than the community that they did in 1973. We now look completely different in so many ways. We're embracing women, Jews of color, trans, gender non-conforming and non-binary Jews, Jews by choice, non-Jews, and people who have lost touch with or have never before seen the value in exploring the joys and complexities of a Jewish life.
how I got to CBST. I came to New York after law school. I didn't have a synagogue. I wasn't interested in one, really. But one morning, while reading the New York Times, I saw an article, Homosexuals in New York Find New Pride. It was October 25, 1977. I had only been in town for about a month and a half. The lead paragraph read, It was Yom Kippur at Congregation Beth Simchat Torah, Manhattan's four-year-old self-proclaimed gay synagogue. And the temple facilities in West Beth Apartments in Greenwich Village were overflowing with more than 350 worshipers. Now, that really knocked me for a loop. The idea of a gay synagogue was totally new for me. I had never heard of any such thing. I was immediately curious. I wasn't sure where West Beth was, somewhere in Greenwich Village. I called the gay switchboard and asked for directions. My parents, who had grown up in New York, had said, don't take the subway, it's not safe. So I was taking buses everywhere. I took the 2nd Avenue bus from East 83rd Street all the way down to the village and walked across town. I left much too much time. I walked into the space and there were exactly two people, Mark Bieber and Alfred Daybot. They were cutting cake. I told Mark that I was looking for a congregation Beth Simchat Torah, and he said, you found the place. Do you want to help us cut some cake? I was immediately put to work. The moment I arrived at CBST, I became a volunteer, and I came to know two people right away. When the service started, I had my next shot. A woman was on the bima. I had never seen a woman leading a service. When it was time for the sermon, which I later learned everyone called the drosh, someone got up from the front row. It was Pincus ben Aaron. He had been sitting with his eyes closed for most of the service, swaying back and forth. Earlier in the service, after we sang L'cha Dodi, music broke out from an overhead sound system and people started dancing around the congregation. They formed a long line, circling around the congregation. I had never heard of anything like this in a service. It blitzed me away. I resolved that I would come back. Those early services were really exciting to me. started to really come out, I experimented with not being orthodox. Almost the first thing I did was go to CBST. I'd never gone before because I didn't travel on Shabbat. I had seen the ads in the Village Voice and I was so tempted to go. Going to CBST was the first healthy thing I did to meet gay people. Here I went as myself. I used my own name. I walked in and I met people and cared who they were and what their names were. I walked around the block over and over. To get to that front door on Bethune Street, you had to walk through this narrow place, as we called it. God knows what's on the other side. Then you saw this endless ramp, and at the front door I thought, what if I can't go in? I'm going to have to go all the way back down. It was very frightening. I didn't know what I would find. I didn't know what a homosexual was like. When I walked in, Murray Carger was sitting at the front door. I said, I'm here for the first time. He made this big deal. It was scary, but also very welcoming that somebody cared that I walked through the door. I came back. I started becoming a person that people knew, and it became a comfortable place for me. I felt like I was with my people.
I grew up in Brooklyn in a conservative observant household. For me personally, religion was important. I moved to the Upper West Side to the apartment where I still live. I went to several services at a conservative synagogue not two blocks away. The service was familiar. There was no problem with that. Then one day, after I had been there for three weeks in a row, some guy came up to me and said, So new, are you married? And since I couldn't say, I wasn't able to say something as facile as, No, is your son available? Or anything like that, I stopped going because I refused to put myself back into that position. At that time, I was a regular at a piano bar on Barrow Street called Marie's Crisis. Many people from CBST were regulars. They said, you have to come. You have to come. You have to come. I had to be part of the shul. I went to CBST on Simchat Torah. The shul was packed. I already knew a lot of people there. I didn't feel like a stranger. Nobody had to bring me. I arrived all by myself. We have cleared off the table, the leftovers stay, wash the dishes and put them away. Told you a story and tucked you in tight at the end of your knuckle. As the moon sets its sails to carry you to sleep over the midnight sea. Sing you a song no one sang to me. May it keep you good company. Now on to the 80s. You get the theme here? 
CBST has grown to become the largest LGBTQ S plus synagogue in the world, serving as a spiritual home to countless Jews, not only here in New York City, but around the world. We have become a refuge for people of all backgrounds and identities. Tonight, we are celebrating the end of the year of our 50th anniversary, our Yovel, the anniversary of that first cold night in a church children's classroom. I'd like to invite, can we get the house lights up for a second? I'd like to invite everybody who's a member of a bo our board of directors to stand so we could all say thank you to our board of directors. I'm delighted and honored to welcome New York State Attorney General Tish James, our hero. I'm delighted that other elected officials are here too. Our New York City controller, Brad Lander. <laughs> New York State uh, Senator, Brad Hoyleman. <laughs> and we have representatives from the governor's office as well. Are any other elected officials here that I haven't acknowledged? Because we're so grateful for all of you doing the important work of making our city and our state and our world a better place. We're here because we remember our past with enormous gratitude. We understand that God has placed us on this earth with a purpose. And part of that purpose is to acknowledge those who have come before us and for us to understand our job to ensure the world which will stand on our shoulders if we so deserve it. We look forward to the future with hope, with love, with joy, and with gratitude. We are excited for what those who come after us will accomplish. We pray that they are grateful for us. Now tonight we can't cover every single moment of CBST's history. We won't be able to spotlight every beloved congregant and every moving sermon or every boring sermon or every glorious performance by the CBST Community Chorus, or every former intern, or every staff person, or every teacher, or every clergy. But you will see a lot of familiar faces, and hear many of the stories that have brought CBST from that small group in a Chelsea church to the world's largest LGBTQS synagogue it is today. We are so glad that you are with us tonight to mark this milestone along our journey. How I got to CBST. I first came to CBST in 1983. I had heard about it before. I lived in Rochester prior to moving to New York, where I was part of a statewide women in medicine group. We had a meeting in New York in 1980 or 1981 where I met Margot Caro. She told me there was a gay synagogue. I must have looked at her like she was out of her mind. I was totally shocked, but I tucked it into the back of my mind. I moved to New York in July of 1983. My mom had died the year before. I had been saying Kaddish in Rochester and shul shopping because there was no place that felt quite right. You go into synagogues and they say, who are you, what do you do? A nice Jewish doctor, do I have a boy for you? When I came to New York, I walked into CBST and it was an amazing experience. I remember walking in the first time. Murray Carter was giving out name tags as I walked into Bethune Street. I didn't know anyone. I just wore my name tag and sat in the back of the room. Shami Chaikin was the Baalat Tefillah. She was amazing. She had such soul and Yiddishkeit that I was transported to another world. Jewish music has always been my passion, so hearing her was incredible. I felt as if I'd come home. And so even though it was the end of my time to be saying Kaddish for my mother, 
I continued for a few more months anyway. That was my introduction to the city. The 1980s saw a new era of pop music, the advent of the personal computer, and a global recession. E.T. phoned home, Ferris Bueller took a day off, and at CBST, the blue schmata was replaced with our first full sidur, sidur b'chol avavcha, with all your heart. And for CBST, like every gay community around the world, it was the decade of AIDS. Long-time congregants remember when almost every week a new person would show up on Friday night visibly sick with the telltale purple lesions, steep weight loss, thrush, and other symptoms. In December of 1981, Michael Levian became the first known CBST member to die from AIDS. Many, many others followed. It was a hard, terrifying time as doctors struggled to care for their patients, Lesbian friends stepped in as caretakers when families couldn't or wouldn't. And the President of the United States couldn't even bring himself to say the word AIDS. The synagogue started by providing a place for people to get straightforward, usable education and resources. We started hosting programming and information sessions for sick congregants, caretakers, and their friends who feared the day that they too might become sick. As a member of the Legal Advisory Committee for Lambda Legal Defense, Art Leonard volunteered as a cooperating attorney. Bill Hipsher litigated the first AIDS anti-discrimination anti case. Mel Rosen was the first volunteer executive director of GMHC. This may be hard to believe for those who only know CBST as it is today, but the community was not at first political. This was frustrating for some, Larry Kramer, for instance, joined and resigned from CBST several times over the years. <laughs> Longtime member Gary Adler was involved with ACT UP. Mel Rosen and Irving Cooperberg were passionate advocates for getting tested and being out with AIDS or HIV-related illnesses, no matter how frightening it was. Yisker, 2006. I had a large family, all of whom were married, having children or on their way to these typical signs of heterosexual adulthood. At least I could find refuge with my cousin Teddy Krolwich, who was also gay. He and his non-Jewish blonde boyfriend would go to CBST every Friday night. Ted found out he had AIDS, and after a very brief struggle with the disease, he died. He was 34, and he had never really come out. He first introduced his lover to his family at the very end of his life. He didn't tell anyone at work that he was gay, and he didn't tell any of his friends that he was sick. His death shocked all his friends and associates because they realized that no one really knew who he was. When Ted died, CBST had no rabbi, so Ted's parents asked their Orthodox rabbi to officiate his funeral. The service was unbelievably painful. The rabbi refused to mention that Ted was gay and made no mention of his lover, Bruce. The service totally denied who Ted was and failed to honor his life. The worst was Ted was buried by a man who hated that he was gay. But I guess Ted's death had one positive benefit. It propelled me out of the closet. I decided to change my future. I realized that everybody was hurt by Ted's refusal to be honest about his life. I learned that being closeted wasn't really a gift to anyone. As more and more members got sick, the CBST board and ritual committee worked to find ways to respond. They ended up taking both a pastoral and an advocacy approach. Members wrote prayers for the sick, services of hope and healing, and newly formed Hevra Beaker Cholim visited patients at St. Vincent's, 
and other local hospitals, whether they were Jewish or not. Because of the crushing reality that so many of our members had no one to say Kaddish for them and their wholeness, the congregation began to rise as one to recite Yisker in their memory. In the newsletter of, in those years, one congregant struggled with the spiritual questions raised by this crisis. Where is God when we think we choose life and then tragedy strikes? When someone contracts AIDS and dies of the disease, where is God? God is in the compassion we feel for the sick and the stricken. God is in our resolve to fight for more responsible governmental action. God is in the strength that we must all search for as we make our way through the shadow. Anytime you laugh, anytime you cry, anytime you hear a sound when you're on the grass, lying on the ground, anytime you wash your hands, I'll be around. I'll be there on the baseball field though I'm well concealed I'll be out there cheering I'll be there in the books you read it is guaranteed I'm not disappearing fast anytime no not anytime and I am there each morning I am there each fall I am present without warning and I'm watching it all yes I'm watching it all oh Anytime you pray, anytime you fight, anytime you've gained a pound, anytime it's day, anytime it's night, anytime the earth moves, I'll be around. I'll be there in the maple trees, I'm a summer breeze on a perfect evening. I'll be there when you celebrate, when the world seems great. I'll be waiting by your side. Anytime, yes, anytime. And I am there each morning. I am there. present without warning and I'm watching it all yes I'm watching it all oh is clear anytime you cry anytime you sing for anything I am there each morning I am there each fall I don't know why this thing happened but this much is clear
I am there. Oh, I am there. Thank you, Sally Wilford, for singing that, and Bill Finn singing these great, these, this great classic by Bill Finn. And then, Bill, I know you're watching, so we're all sending you our love and gratitude for everything you've done for us. Well, CBST was there. The sheer magnitude of the crisis, which over the years culminated in the loss of 40% of CBST's membership, weighed heavily on our members who devoted endless energies to supporting the needs of the sick and the dying and the surviving. Congregants and lay leaders stepped up to officiate at funerals, to counsel the sick and bereaved, but it, it wasn't enough. It became clear that CBST had outgrown its scrappy congregant-run roots and needed more spiritual and pastoral support. The congregation had to face the fact that it couldn't run as an all-volunteer effort anymore. As Jack Greenberg remembers, with AIDS, the rabbi referrals became a full-time occupation. CBST needed a rabbi. And so, in May 1990, the Board of Trustees voted unanimously to hire a rabbi. The rabbi search committee, led by Art Leonard and Roseanne Leipzig, started looking for the perfect candidate. As a queer and unaffiliated synagogue, CBST struggled to get the word out. Some rabbinical schools and organizations had issues with homosexual activity. Some cited bureaucracy. Frustrated, then President Mel Rosen reached out to the religion reporter at the New York Times about the challenges, and the article was on the front page of the Metropolitan section. That piece in The Gray Lady was better publicity than any ad. Inquiries poured in from all over. Surprisingly, one of those inquiries was from a young rabbi named Sharon Kleinbaum. She had delivered the keynote address at the 12th Annual International Conference of Gay and Lesbian Jews in 1991. It will not surprise you to know that the CVST members in the audience were very impressed. At her third interview, held on folding chairs in Art Leonard's unfurnished Upper West Side apartment, they enthusiastically knew that she was the one. Rabbi Kleinbaum checked all the boxes. She was raised in a conservative synagogue, attended an Orthodox yeshiva for high school, and was ordained by the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College, and she was working for the Reform Movement. <laughs> She came fresh from a job as Director of Congregational Relations for the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism. Her dress shot were exceptional and inspirational, and she was even a Yiddishist. Many at the synagogue were more than a little uneasy about the transition to a rabbi-led congregation. But over time, Rabbi Kleinbaum's passion, intellect, love for Judaism, and dedication to the community convinced them that a rabbi could be a beloved spiritual leader, a teacher, and a friend. Rabbi Kleinbaum was installed as CBST's first rabbi on September 11, 1992. In her first month, she officiated at four funerals, 
including one for the visionary Mel Rosen, whose idea it had been to hire a rabbi for CBST. The 1990s also saw the first intifada and the Oslo process, Nelson Mandela's release, the beginning of the Clinton administration. Within the walls of CBST at Westbeth, the times were changing. Under Rabbi Kleinbaum's leadership, the 90s saw the beginning of the adult B'nai Mitzvah program, children's programming, the first Yom Kippur services at the Javits Center, trips to Israel, CBST retreats, the Cooperberg Rittmaster rabbinical internship, the hiring of a musical director, very part-time, <laughs> and the creation of the CBST Community Chorus. And then there was that time when CBST got thrown out of the Salute to Israel Day Parade.
Rabbi Kleinbaum didn't have to do the job alone for long. In 1994, Bill Fern wanted to honor his close friends, Irvin Cooperberg and Lou Rittmaster, and together with Rabbi Kleinbaum came up with the idea to create a rabbinical student internship. I had the great blessing of being one of those interns from 2000 to 2002. And before Rabbi Kleinbaum went on her first sabbatical in 1999, CBST hired our first assistant rabbi, Roderick Young. The growing congregation finally had a growing clergy. And if it weren't for Irving, the synagogue would never be what it is today. But I wanted to honor them. And I thought the thing to do would be to establish a prize, some prize for something creative, Jewish, that would be available to anybody to search for, to work toward in the Jewish world of New York, not just our synagogue. And I went to, uh, when I decided I would like to establish such an honor and name it for Irv and Lou. So the first person to talk to was Sharon. Made an appointment, went down to see her, and I explained, I, these are my two best friends in the synagogue. And I want to establish a prize that's going to give them honor and say thanks for what they've done and basically thanks for being my friend and all that. She never interrupted me, listened very carefully, took note of everything I was saying and so forth. And then it came her turn to respond with her, her feelings about it. And she said to me, in a way that was not going to hurt my feelings at all. I think it's a wonderful idea, and I think it's something we should do sometime. But I'm telling you that that's really not what I need at the moment. She said to me, I am swamped. I am overlooked because I I can't get it all done. I can't deal with the synagogue and the, the burials and the deaths. It's just, it's, it's just, it's overwhelming and I need help. I said, what kind of help? What can we give you more money? What, uh, what kind of help? And she said something to me that I hadn't ever, ever thought of really. She said, I, I need uh, a, a, a rabbinic interns. I need young people who are studying for the rabbinate to come in and work with me and do what I can't do because they pick up the slack. So I said, okay, let's work for that. We'll name them after Irvin Lou and still give them the honor. And that was how the idea of the Cooperberg Rittmaster interns came about. So the first year was gonna be one, the second year two, and the third year three. And that was how we started the rabbinic intern program. We looked around and found suitable people who were willing to not just run services, but do everything. And what happened was that by the time that an intern finished that first year, they could run a synagogue. That's how well they were trained. The second year came and I stuck to the, I stuck to the promise. And we got two interns. And then it was really going pretty well. Uh, lots of help and uh, she was able to function better. And, and the interns learned a lot in the meantime. And they really did bring honor to Irvin Lou. If 
דברים שאין לו המשיעור, הופיעו, והביקורים והוריו, וגמלוס חסודים וסלמוד תורו, וגמלוס חסודים וסלמוד תורו. אלו דבורים שאין לו המשיעור. It all began in 1995 at a beautiful Catskill summer evening cocktail party with a lively conversation between Rabbi Kleinbaum and me discussing the rabbi's idea of beginning a concert series at CBST. The programming would bring great music of all varieties to the congregation, 
Jewish, classical, musical theater, and repertoire from many other genres. The rabbi's desire to start such a series was a reflection of the vision she had spoken about in her installation just three years prior. It was not surprising to me that Rabbi Kleinbaum wanted to begin with repertoire that required an orchestra of 50, <laughs> at least 50, with a chorus of a thousand, who knows, and a soloist, at least one. I suggested that we might want to scale down the forces and get the series going as soon as possible. And with that, preparations for our first event began in earnest with Joyce, CBST's new music director, our congregant, Jill Vexler, and myself. So on February 19th, 1996, our first Shabbat Shira concert was held. It was held on the Lower East Side in what had been Anshe Chesed's original synagogue dating back to 1849. We now know this venue as the Orensance Foundation, a once holy space transformed into a funky event venue, still filled with tons of original synagogue detail. The concert was followed by a festive reception and an elegant dinner held at yet another old, now neglected shul on the Lower East Side. As artsy and beautiful as the concert venue was, the owners somehow neglected to inform us that um, the building didn't have heating <laughs> when we rented the space. And wouldn't you know, that Monday night was one of the coldest nights of the entire winter. I remember playing the concert wearing gloves with the fingertips cut out. During rehearsals at Orensans, this is the truth, we used Yona Schimmelknishes as hand warmers. <laughs> They're right down the block, and I highly recommend multiple uses for knishes. Who knew? <laughs> Concert dress resembled what one might wear to scale a Himalayan mountain, but it didn't matter. The concert was magical, and this is how we began that very concert. Hallelujah. 
throughout the past 27 years and even through the pandemic. CBST's Shabbat Shira concerts have explored Yiddish, Sephardic, Israeli, Mizrahi, and Persian Jewish music, cantorial music, music of Leonard Bernstein, Aaron Copeland, Kurt Weill, Ernst Bloch, William Finn, Franz Schubert, Robert Schumann, just to name a few. These concerts have also featured great operatic repertoire, a concert focusing on Jewish immigration, and even a concert, of course, about Jewish food, entitled, Let My People Eat. Since its founding almost 30 years ago, the, C the magnificent CBST Chorus has been a source of immense pride for our congregation, bringing deep inspiration and beauty to countless services and concerts over the years, and representing CBST at community events and at prestigious music festivals. We are so blessed by your gifts. Since 2016, these fantastic instrumentalists that are just about to play, um, they have been with us at CBST offering chamber music concerts several times a year to help support CBST's social justice work. These intimate and beloved programs have become an important part of the cultural life of the synagogue. The following piece, Prokofiev's Overture on Hebrew Themes was played at that very first Shabbat Shira concert on that very cold winter night in 1996.
Wow, thank you so much for that glorious, gorgeous music. And so now I'm delighted to invite our co-host for tonight's celebration, CBST member Andy Cohen. Hi, Rabbi. Hi, Rabbi. How we doing? We're doing great, This Andy. music is unbelievable. Wow, I've been back there marveling. This is incredible. Um, by this time, CBST ha was outgrowing its West Beth home. The space had served it well, but the cramped windowless quarters were starting to feel claustrophobic. Between the remote location and the hard to find door, the space felt oddly closeted. Rabbi Kleinbaum joked that it felt like a shul, like a 70s underground lesbian bar, hard to find and you couldn't see it from the street. This wasn't gonna work, right? The newly formed Michigan Development Committee was led by Marcy Kahn, Eric Rosenbaum, and Bill Hibscher, and so began the search for a new home. It quickly became clear that to find a space appropriate for CBST, we would need to raise money, a lot of money. Uh, we needed a plan. In 2007, a new design committee was formed, and with the help of the great Jonathan Sheffer, the synagogue retrained the, archi uh, the Architecture Research Office. CBST began work with ARO principal Stephen Cassell to evaluate potential sites. In 2011, CBST bought 130 West 30th Street at a cost of $7.1 million. The space was the previous home of a fur store and a knockoff handbag store. <laughs> the capital campaign took two more years. The steering committee, Steve Frank, Eric Rosenbaum, Ari Ludvigson, and Bill Hibscher took the lead on planning and fundraising. The community campaign ultimately realized donations from 700 donors. In July 2013, the committee made good on its promise to commit to breaking ground only when the funding had been fully realized. And finally, on April 3rd, 2016, hundreds of congregants, New York elected officials, interface clergy, rabbis, and LGBTQ plus leaders walked the Torahs under a rainbow chuppah on a freezing cold day a mile and a half from Bethune Street to 30th Street, where the chorus, frozen and joyful, <laughs> sang as the Torahs approached. Will you build me a house, a house that really will be mine? Then let me give you my design, a simple scheme of the house I dream of. Build my house of wood, build my house of stone, Build my house of brick and mortar. Make the ceiling strong, strong against the storm. Shelter when the days grow shorter. But build my house of love and paint my house with trusting and warm it with the warmth of your Heart. Make the floor of faith, make the walls of truth, put a roof of peace above. Only build my house of
2010s, CBST community has consistently demonstrated a profound commitment to the pursuit of justice. Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdof. We marched for Soviet Jewry, championed LGBTQ rights, HIV AIDS in the 70s and the 80s. We played key roles in policy shifts through the 90s and 2000s that propelled us first to domestic partnership, then to national marriage equality, and finally brought an end to don't ask, don't tell. As the community grew in numbers and influence, our work evolved and expanded. Dedicated groups organized over the years served meals at the Church of the Holy Apostles soup kitchen, immersion in the history of the Israel-Palestine conflict and attempts to be a role of peacemakers, advocating for the homeless LGBTQ youth crisis in New York City, and took a stand against Islamophobia in the years after the September 11th terror attack. After the 2016 election, our activism for justice reached new heights. So many of our members in their work outside of the synagogue were leaders for social justice in so many different uh, ways. CBST members after the 2016 election enthusiastically formed teams dedicated to welcoming immigrants, creating the first and maybe only ARC immigration clinic in a synagogue, fostering Jewish Muslim engagement ending mass incarceration. Over the last 50 years, our community, our members, and our clergy have played an integral role in transforming, transforming our city, our country, and our world for the better. out and tell our story let it echo far and wide make them hear you make them hear you how justice was our battle and how justice was denied make them hear you make them hear you and say to those who blame us for the chose to fight that sometimes there are battles which are more than black or white and i could not put down my sword when justice was my right make them hear you make them hear you And tell our story to your children and your friends Make them hear you Make them hear you And tell them in our struggle We were not the only ones Make them hear you Make them hear you Your sword can be a sermon or the power Justice be demanded by ten million righteous souls. Make them hear you. When they hear you, I'll be near you. It's us. It's us, Andy. America's favorite anchor team. <laughs> I 
I think I was. would watch that show. I would watch that show. Me and show the rabbi <laughs> spitting out the news. I would love yes. that. I would love that. You know, well, I'm, re I'm retiring soon, so I let's know, talk. I know. Well, you know what? You have a permanent bartending slot in, okay, on my show. That's, that's my life. Yes. Well, we all know what happened in 2020, right? Over the course of only a few days, the world shut down. Workplaces sent their employees home, restaurants closed their doors, schools and daycare switched to video learning with predictably scattered success. We washed our groceries with bleach, remember that? Was that was so weird. That was ridiculous. That was so weird. Um, Zoom became either our favorite four-letter word or least favorite four-letter <laughs> word. Um, and faith communities had to find a way to provide spiritual sustenance pastoral care and a sense of community all within the confines of a little laptop screen and what a screen it was <coughs> excuse me with beautiful weekly services rabbi kleinbaum's extraordinary psalms class and incredible lairhouse offerings including hebrew classes that reach nearly 100 students cbst provided a much needed lifeline and kept us well connected no matter where you found yourself during the pandemic. After two years of fully online High Holy Days services and one year- That was really crazy. I mean, that is crazy. I can't believe it was two years, yeah. by the way. And one year of hybrid services in 2023 in September, we brought Yom Kippur services back to the Javits Center for the first time since 2019. It was great. Thousands of people gathered in the Crystal Pavilion and online to worship, sing, and to be together in the presence of each other and the one who made us. CBST exists in a world our founders could never have imagined. Marriage equality is the law of the land, at least for now. Not insignificant portion of CBST's members are now children of our families. From a team of volunteers within those few Bethune rooms off the Hudson River, we now have a gorgeous home. Full-time rabbis, full-time director of social justice programming, a music director, a full-time cantor, a scholar in residence, two Cooper Berg Ritt Master Rabbinical interns, teachers, and of course, the community chorus. We have a full-time executive director and an administrative staff and a fabulous board of directors led by President Sabrina Farber. But we know we are now facing a rise of anti-Semitism and hate as LGBT Jewish folks. It's something few of us could have imagined. We are afraid for family and loved ones in Israel and for civilians in Gaza and the West Bank. The tsunami of the threat of authoritarianism is a terrifying worldwide reality. In spite of all this, we have become a powerful spiritual community of resistance and love. CBSC has meant so many to so much to so many. It's not just a place to pray or to celebrate life cycle events or bury our dead or fight for social justice. It is a family for those of us whose families have denied them, a community of Jews bound not just by families of origin, but also by profound families of choice, by love and dedication and commitment. Our families form through baby namings and softball games, weddings, retreats, shiva minyanim, funerals, unveiling, simchat Torah, adult be mitzvah cohorts, and powerful lifelong friendships. We are publishing books, traveling to Israel and the world, here is where we find community, warmth, and love. Here is where we make connections that keep us whole. Here is where we find our people, whoever they may be. Love, 
what vision I marvel at the gift No fruit could be sweeter than this
Let's hear it for this incredible multi-generational ensemble. Larry Kay, Cantor Rosen, Hannah kessler Karp, born and raised at CBST, and Judy Ribnick. And of course, the chorus. It's very emotional. Very emotional. Being part of CBST's 50 and fabulous program has been a wonderful and meaningful experience for me. I love CBST. Rabbi Kleinbaum, you're my favorite bartender <laughs> and my favorite rabbi. Uh, we all stand on the shoulders of those who came before us to make this community possible. It's an honor to get to work with the amazing clergy, amazing clergy and staff at CBST, as well as all the, performance, uh, all the performers in the community chorus. I wish you all could see even a little of the work that went on behind the scenes to put on the show that you just saw. Now, we all know that when you go to a Broadway show this time of year, there is an ask to support an important cause that comes during the curtain call. Well, this is no different, everybody. <laughs> Many of you have already supported CBST's Fund for the Future campaign through this event, and many of you are here as guests of people who have. Either way, we hope that you will take out your phones and further support CBST at whatever level you feel most comfortable. On the screens now, there's a QR code that you can scan, or you can text CBST50 to 44321, 44321. You're gonna receive a link to complete your donation easily. It's very easy. Uh, I'm not tech savvy, and I figured it out. May we all <laughs> provide shoulders for those yet to come. From Jacob Goodbye's shopping bag to this extraordinary night, CBST has seen the world change. CBST has been the change. And in 50 more years, someone else will be standing on this bima, and they will be talking about what has happened in CBST's first century. From generation to generation, Lador Vador, Evan Maasu Habonim Haital Rosh Pina, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. May we all go from strength to strength. And now I'd like to invite up our assistant rabbi, Rabbi Werber, Rabbi James to join us, Rabbi Ayelet Cohen, our Cooperberg Rittmaster Rabbinical Interns, Adam Graubart and Eliza Schwartz, and I'd like and uh, Aaron Aaron, our cantorial student, to join us. And I like to ask everyone here to stand by the decade of arriving at CBST. If the 1970s, sit down, people, people, not. I haven't started yet. Oi, Gewalt. Okay, if you came to CBST in the 1970s, please stand. Nice. The 1980s, 1990s, 2000s. 2010s, 2020s, that means everyone. Because you're here now, that means you've come to CBST in the 20s, okay? Fred Davey, you're not standing. You're an honorary part of CBST, Fred. Yes. So join us all as we express gratitude for having arrived at this moment. The Shechiano.
remain standing for the gay national anthem.
I'd like to invite all the performers to the stage. Rabbi Cohen, Adria Benjamin, all the chamber musicians, Sally Wilford, Andy Cohen, Mark Malamut, ha Hannah kessler Carp, Larry Kay, Judy Ribnick, and Liz Shire. Would you join us on the stage? You may be seated for a brief moment. This is like Yom Kippur. Down up. Down yeah, down up. up. We're just doing a little the door by door. The whole staff, the production team, let's hear, let's give a round of applause for the whole production team backstage. Thank you to the committee and thank you to be here with us. But the fun is not over. Join us downstairs to party. Follow the flag bearers out and you'll find your way to the party downstairs. Shabbat Shalom.